All right, Deco, you are on. Go for it, sir. Cool. That's it, folks. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, we're going to talk about what changed uh, since the last year, you know, like on the telemetry field for poop. Basically, this is going to be a, a, a kind of a follow up of my presentation of the last year where we introduced open telemetry and how we adopted it on poop. OK, so for folks that don't know me yet, I'm Deco. Uh, I'm a senior developer at Red Hat. Uh, I'm also ADHD, and also I'm a dad and a husband. Uh, if you're not seeing me right now, uh, I'm a Caucasian, white male. i using dreads on my hair. I have a bird, and I'm using a red T-shirt about uh, Red Hat volunteering. Maybe it's not that visible, but just all describing myself here. Uh, okay, let's start with a quick recap, you know. Uh, basically, like, what is telemetry? You know, like, telemetry, it's about the data emitted, you know, like, from a system about about its behavior. And what is open telemetry? You know, like, open telemetry is basically like a collection of APIs, as the case, you know, like, in tools, uh, baked by the cloud native uh, foundation. You know, like basically folks that take care of Kubernetes and other cloud tools. Uh, and when we adopted, you know, like open telemetry on poop, uh, for, for like on the records, it was on poop 3.26, you know, like and May 23, basically. Uh, I'm going to do a very quick introduction about some concepts because like we're going to use them uh, over the over the presentation, you know. I need to talk very quickly about what is zero code or programmatic, programmatically or manual instrumentation. Uh, basically, like when we're talking about zero code instrumentations, uh, we Open telemetry uses a wrapper around Unicorn to insert his uh, functions. Uh, auto instrumentation basically attaches, have used some Python code to attach itself to the framework. You know, both of them use monkey patching, you know, like to attach itself to the application. You know, like this is how uh, Open telemetry generate data, that generate data about your application. You know, can be metrics or traces or so on uh, and the last thing is about manual instrumentation it's when we developers you know like we configure and create our own metrics you know like so basically like we configure our application um, to understand how it's gonna generate and how it's gonna export the data uh, over to open telemetry and what we learned over the last year, you know, like it's been a journey. Uh, we've been running a poop service with some users, you know, I would say like a lot of users. And over a year, like it's been a journey, you know, like when we had to learn a lot, had to hear lots of like from our, from our sorry, from our users and understand like their pains or their needs you know so we have users and users have domains repos uh, repositories you know like and they distribute content and they also have questions about those things you know like questions of how much we served how much data we served how much space you know like we are using or how long does a request take, you know, like from receiving something from a user and replying back to it. Uh, and we also learn about uh, our limitations here, you know, like, first thing, it's about our limits uh, of the telemetry, you know, like around the pop architecture specifics, you know. Uh, we have workers. You know, like we have workers for 
the API itself. We have workers to to the content app, you know, like to reply, to send data to our users, you know, and we also have workers to, well, to run our tasks, you know, like our background tasks. And the first thing that we learned is that having multiple instances of poop on the same host can cause metrics overriding on the collector. So every time, like, we had a bunch of workers of N type, you know, like when, when, when they are generating data, you know, like if they don't have anything to differentiate uh, who's generating that data, you know, like when the data reaches the collector, usually, you know, like the data gets, uh, it's overwritten, you know, like at each step. Uh, this was really like a pain to discover. Uh, but after discovering that, you know, like, and providing the fixes needed, you know, like we got like our data running plain and cool, you know, the second limitation that we learned, it's that the way we fork our process here, uh, could make like the zero code instrumentation unable to reach and gather the metrics. Uh, basically like we have a main process of our workers or for background workers. And when it tries to execute some tasks, you know, that task does not have the zero code instrumentation on it. So anything that an expected metric that we had over that task, uh, we weren't able to reach, you know, like and to gather that data. You know, again, like this was also one of the issues that we faced and that we didn't know about you know like we don't have that uh, information you know like on the open telemetry documentation so we had to learn like mostly by try and error uh also we learned that the auto instrumentation is basically focused on traces you know open telemetry is having like a very strong focus on traces and it's not easy, you know, like to get the data from traces and inject that data into the metrics. One example was the previous one, you know, like about the host name, where Pope runs. Uh, we didn't know like how to get the data on the traces, which the traces have, you know, like, and inject that into the metrics, which could make the, the differentiation between the metrics and could solve our problem of being of our having you know, like our data overwritten on the collector uh, the second issue was there was no easy like we couldn't find an easy way to add new labels to the automatic metrics so like we wanted to add like new labels uh new dimensions of the information that we need to to stood over the telemetry and we couldn't find an easy way. Also, this was really uh, a pain that we had to solve somehow, you know? So at the end of all those things, like we decided to refactor, you know, like the telemetry stack, not the telemetry stack itself, sorry, but you know, like the way we interact with, the, with our telemetry stack, you know? Right now we refactoring and this refactoring is leading, you know, like by uh, Lubosch. Sorry, there is a mistake here. Like there is a typo uh, with some folks, you know, but basically like Lubosch is doing all the half lifting work here, you know, like, and it was based like a very good and amazing work. If you guys like want to follow it right now, we have a PR open for it, you know, like on, on our poop car on the upstream. Uh, most of the code that we have here, you know, like it was tested uh, on our services instance where we use like patching and so on, you know, like so most of the things here we already tested. And wow, what we got so far, you know, like when when we decide to abandon the auto instrumentation, you know, like and implement our metrics, uh, what we got, like where we are right now. First, we have the request duration, you know, like it was an automatic metric that we had to re-implement on our side, and we could inject a lot, like 
all the, the labels, you know, like all the attributes that we need on our site. Uh, this is a histogram where we can easily like derivate and, and get some data, you know, like just like latest in percentiles that we have here, you know, like we can get uh, the number of requests that we are having, you know, like during a time frame and so on. Uh, also, over the last year, we developed some uh, some metrics about the tasking system. You know, right now we have this one, which is the unblocked tasks waiting in the queue. You know, so we can have tasks that does not have anything blocking them from execution, uh, but somehow we could have some bottleneck that is limiting the amount of time. You know, like the amount of resources. Uh, that this task needs to execute, you know, like the number of workers, for example. So this could give us uh, an overview of the current state of the queue, so we can understand, like, if you can, if you need to scale up the number of workers just to, you know, like fan out the queue and make the tasks more responsive, you know, like so. Users are submitting the tasks, you know, like, and they are they they can see that the tasks are being executed, you know, like. Also, we have about uh, a metric, you know, like about the longest uh, unblocked waiting time waiting time for a task, you know, like so. Uh, how much, you know, like the newest task is waiting on the queue to be executed. This could also give us some vision and you know, like about uh, how the queue is behaving, you know, like how the task system is behaving itself. Uh, we also have like the space usage by domain here. Uh, although seems like a very boring, you know, like metric, you know, like we expect to see, you know, like some domains, some users uh, to, you know, like to receive lots of content, you know, like so we're gonna see this graph changing, you know, and this could give us an overview of, again, resource utilization, you know, like how much uh, our poop instance is storing right now, you know. And also, how much uh, we, how much data we, we are serving right now, you know. Like, so we have like this metric here, size of server data. So every time a, use, a, a user requests some content, you know, like, even if it's uh, stored on S3, for example, where which we would redirect the user to the data, you know, like we get that information and store this as a metric here, you know, like how much we serve it uh, data for our users. Uh, and well, where we want to go from now, you know, like from here. This is basically like uh, I just gra grabbed, you know, like a cut of my presentation of the last year, where we want to, to to get, you know, like after a year, you know, like get. First thing is getting rid of the instrumentation of the instrumenting agent, you know, like the zero the, the zero code instrumentation, uh, which we believe that, that would be better for test for testing and would be like less complex, you know, like for the. Uh, on the image entry points, you know. Also, we wanted to improve the tooling, you know, like to instrument our code. And also we want to explore logging, which is a good thing. Based like we did most of those things here, you know, like we based like we worked on refactoring those metrics. Uh, if you guys could see, like right now, the PR we have, I believe at least that we have better testing, you know, and we are removing complexity from the image entry points. Like we're not, like right now, we are not using uh, the uh, the instrumentation agent, you know, like to wrap around unicorn. We're just using like our plain our, our plain entry points, and we have code directly on our application that deal with sending data uh, to the telemetry stack. And also we are starting to explore, you know, like logging as a kind of a source to, to do some analysis. 
and also like in my opinion here like what what are the things that i really hope to see for the next year you know like first thing i want us to have tracing you know like right now we have to abandon it just to focus on the on on, on metrics but i believe like tracing is also very valuable for us you know like and i really want to see that implemented in the next year you know like can keep following it also i want to us uh, to advance on using log for that analysis i believe like those three things like metrics tracing and logging basically they are the the holy grail you know like of observability and those things can you know like help us a lot on following uh, how our instances are behaving, you know, like, or how healthy they are. And last thing, uh, probably we want to prepare for ASGI and book for uh, things that we expected, you know, like to happen in the next year or so. And that's it, folks. Thank you so much for having me here. And well, I'm opening up for questions. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions? Please raise your hands. Grant, please, man. So, Deco, now that it's up and running in uh, in a services environment. Have you all had? time to think about connecting the next step of I'm gathering these metrics. Now I want to auto alert, let's say, as a result. Is that a thing that you all have considered? We have alerts, but I wouldn't say it's auto alerts. You know, like we had to develop the carries that we use to, to trigger those alerts. But we have, so imagine that our application is receiving lots of requests right now. We usually could uh, expect some slowdown so the alerts are there for, for it, you know, like they can trigger an alert us that, you know, like something related to the response time, for example, is happening right now, you know, so we could go, you know, like directly to that point, you know, and right now I believe like we have a bunch of alerts around it, around those metrics, and I may expect to have more in the next period. Very cool. Brian, please, man. Yeah, uh, a little bit about those alerts. So um, there's a link here. I put it into the chat, um, which is we follow a technique that's from the Google SRE handbook, um, which if you've not, if, if you're interested in alerts and you haven't seen this, you should go look at it. Um, but it, it, it outlines what I like about this chapter is that it outlines kind of four or five options and they get they start off real naive um, and then they kind of get increasingly more interesting and more capable. And it's cool because they kind of like, if they just dropped like the most complicated version on you, it would be, it would read like, why? Like why this is like, why did we take it to this extent? But so they kind of, it's, it's a good read in the sense that it's kind of like conditions um, the problem with like increasingly more sophisticated stuff. So our alerts are built on this idea of a burn rate over multiple timescales. Um, which uh, is is more complicated than I want to kind of explain right now. Um, so go check it out. It's a great, it's a good read. Cool, cool, cool. And thanks for sharing your link, man. Uh, any other questions, folks? Nope. Okay. Ryan again, please, man. Yeah. Um, not a question, but maybe a little bit more of an advertisement. Um, uh, there's probably a question here. So is it, so like we've been doing this on the service team um, and we're taking all the metrics that we have in terms of the open telemetry stuff and putting them all into our upstream code. And that's happening or happened. Um, uh, but then we have all these dashboards I think the idea is that we're going to try to publish all these dashboards publicly. Isn't there like a Grafana community 
publish dashboards here kind of place. I, think I is, believe they have, but I believe it's related to templates, you know? Yeah. But basically, right. like, all, almost like all, that, uh, uh, all our dashboards, you know, like, uh, they are replicated over the OCIM, you know, like, we have a profile there for open telemetry development around Pope. And basically, like, we synchronize, you know, like, all the changes, you know, like, all the, we have, you know, like, around services, we basically replicate those dashboards on, on OCI of itself. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, and so um, more or less for those users who are watching here or, or later, I mean, I think the idea is that you too can have nice dashboards. And for sure, um, that comes from uh, making sure the, the metrics emit correctly in our code. And then it comes from making sure that there are pre-published, pre pre-built dashboards as a community asset that anyone can just kind of turn on on their Grafana. So okay. I think that's a working goal. We're not there yet, but we want to get there. OK, folks. I think that's it. All right. Any other questions? Three, two, one. All right, Deco, thank you very much. Let me stop the recording here. Thank you, folks. Yeah, thank you, Deco. That was great. Outstanding. Yeah.